Okay, welcome, welcome everyone. I hope you are well and enjoying your day. Welcome to your prenatal yoga. My name is Emma Heald and I'm here with you today with Fit Mums and Friends as well. I hope this finds you well and enjoying your day. Hopefully this will go well. Earlier I have had some power cuts in our area. So if that happens, then I will just go back onto Facebook and live again if that happens. So please bear with me if I lose you at any time. So welcome to your prenatal yoga. I've designed this class today so it's suitable for all trimesters. However, within that, please know that obviously all pregnancies are so, so different. Um, how you feel today will be different to how you feel tomorrow and how you feel today will be different to how someone else feels. So absolutely take your time with any of the movements, anything that I'm introducing, and if anything doesn't feel appropriate or right for you, then feel free not to do it. Prenatal yoga is as much about working and calming down our nervous system as it is as much as working the physical body. Gives you the opportunity to take a step away from the busyness of life and work through some exercise or some movement or some settling and softening with just yourself and your pregnancy. Of course, we're in slightly unusual times right now. So instead of a very quiet yoga studio, you may be at home with your other children, your pets, your partner, your families, or by yourself. So today really is about listening to what you intuitively know and working with that. So very briefly talking about listening. A big part of being pregnant is listening to the knowledge that you already have. At the moment, you might feel that you don't have as much knowledge by being more at home and less out and about. Or you might feel overwhelmed with knowledge if you are finding you have more capacity to be online and in and down that rabbit hole of Google <laughs> and all that is there. So you might be in a place of thinking you have enough knowledge or too much time to search or not enough because situations have changed and maybe you aren't spending as much time with people, other mums. So today's practice is about tapping into that intuitive knowledge. You will know everything you need to know. To tap into that, we're gonna start seated. You can be on a chair, you can be, I'm just kneeling right now, or you can be sat however you wish the body to sit. My main invitation is just to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, so I've just got a cardigan on at the moment, it's colder at this side of the house. That you're comfortable, if you've got other children with you, you can snuggle them in, or maybe someone is with you. And if you're by yourself, enjoying that quiet moment. So we're gonna start with something that's called a mudra. And a mudra is a gesture with the hand. So sometimes in yoga, you'll see us do prayer, which is called Anjali or Namaste mudra. Often we take mudras with our hands without even realizing it, especially in our culture. You could say that this is a mudra, we're doing well. This, stop, or guidance is a mudra. We're gonna work with one and in our yoga is called Hakini mudra. And all it is, is just bringing the fingertops together like such with space between the hands. And then just having that resting in front of the chest or where it feels comfortable for you. And this is a mudra of contemplation. I'm just gonna sit up a little bit so you can see. A mudra of contemplation. And there's a great photo of my dad at my wedding. <laughs> sat like this. I don't think he realised that it was Hakini Mudra, but I think he was probably contemplating or hoping or listening that it would all go okay. So create that Mudra if you wish. If you don't want to do that, bring hands on towards your belly. Maybe close the eyes. That's one of the greatest ways of listening to our intu intuition and into our knowledge. 
and we step away from the resources online, maybe from all the information that you are getting from other people. And taking about a minute here. And don't worry if the mind is busy and half listening to something else. Just noticing the fingertips touching each other. Connecting the left and right sides of our body. And every now and again, letting a long exhalation out of the mouth. And feel free if you have someone in your home with you, they're so welcome to join this practice as well. A long sigh, a letting go, almost like you've been holding on, waiting to receive certain knowledge, but just know that you have it already. Got about another 30 seconds here. And as you close the eyes, your listening turns inward. You might be able to notice the tension in the body if you're holding. Maybe the softness and freedom of the body as you settle into your pregnancy. And listening becomes amplified when we close the eyes. You might notice sounds in the house, outside of the house. Or the thoughts of the mind get a little bit louder. Releasing the hands now and just bringing them on towards your belly. And taking a few rounds of breath there. Just giving acknowledgement to that precious cargo. And noticing, listening to what these quiet moments provide for your system, your nerves, your breath, calming and collecting the energy. If the eyes are closed, then gently opening the eyes and just releasing the hands on towards the legs. Great, we're gonna get moving now. So I'm gonna move away from the camera a little bit so you'll be able to see me, but don't worry, I'll talk you through all the movement as well. I'm just gonna bring my notes with me. Okay, so we're gonna come into a kneeling or seated pose. I'm just gonna move away from the camera so you can see me. I'm just gonna do this kneeling, but make sure you're sat as comfortably as you wish. Bringing fingertips towards the floor, I'm gonna take the other arm up and over. So I offer this in most of my classes, if not all of them, and just taking a gentle stretch there. Maybe look up towards the ceiling, which makes it a little bit more dynamic. And then bringing the hand towards the floor. Let's do that on the other side, reaching out, up and over. And just know that as we move, most of these flows that I offer you, let's do one more on each side, are relatively gentle. Of course, as a pregnant woman, you can, of course, move more dynamically, but truly it depends on what you wish for, not what you can do. And so as you move to the other side, just know that this practice, I would say normally start movement from about six weeks or 12 weeks if you've had a C-section. Let's bring the fingertips to the floor. Let's take the arms up now. I'm gonna take hold of each elbow. Press the elbows away and up. So I'd love for you to get a little bit of space in towards the front body. If you're later on in your pregnancy, this might give you a little bit more breathing space. And then we're gonna take that framework of the arms and just tilt gently to one side. Come back to center, change the frame, reach the elbows up and a little lean over. Good, let's take an extra breath on this side. The second side often gets less time. And then bring the arms down as you do. Just bring hands back towards your baby bump. And just take a long breath there. And we bring the hands back so we can listen in. So we can pause before rushing to the next thing. 
Okay, we're going to move on to all fours now. So some of these poses, some of these movements are going to start to become familiar now if you've been with me over the past six or seven weeks. So hands towards the floor, knees towards the floor, just in case you can't see me. I'm going to press through my hands, press through my shins, arch the back into a pose called cat. And then keep that hugging in, that sense of drawing the belly, the pregnancy baby in towards you, belly in towards you, and then looking forward. And then we repeat. So there's this downward press of the hands of the shins, lift between the shoulder blades. Keep that sense of pressing, but reverse the action. Let's do two more here. I'm moving relatively slow. You can, of course, move quicker. And you can take the weight slightly further back as well. Looking forward. You can do this kneeling as well. Curling in. And looking forward. Excellent. Okay, let's tuck the toes under. If you're brand, brand new to yoga, I'll do all the poses with you. We're going to do a shape called downward facing dog. Again, anything doesn't feel right, come back to hands and knees. And feel free to comment in the comment section at any time. So we're going to lift up into downward facing dog. It's quite a strong shape. So that sense of hugging the baby in, hugging the bump in towards you like in cat cow, put that in here. I'm going to bend my knees. And then allow the spine to lengthen by bending the knees and thinking sit bones up and back. Now from here, take the feet a little wider, as wide as you need to accommodate your pregnancy. And we're going to walk the hands back. So don't think we've done this one yet. We're going to walk the hands back and into a squat. I'm going to have to move my sofa out of the way. <laughs> into a squat. Okay, good. And then bring the hands back down. You might need the feet a little wider. And we're going to walk the hands out into downward facing dog. We're going to repeat that a couple of times. So walking the hands back, we come into squat. And then hands towards the floor and walking out. Younger kids love joining in with this one. And downward facing dog. One more time, just like that, and we're gonna then we're gonna put in coming up to stand into our squat. So heart lifts, hands to the floor. This is a good one if you've got anything going on with the pelvis, you don't want to do too many lateral movements, and downward facing dog. Okay, we walk the hands back into squat. And then you can always bring the hands to the knees or the legs and press, press, press up. Any dizziness, make sure you go really slow. Take the arms wide if that feels okay, up above the head and hands into prayer. Okay, we're going to add this coming up into standing into the movement. So taking the arms wide into a big, 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 big stretch. Bringing the hands down through prayer, so we come into our squat. Hands towards the floor, we walk the hands forward into downward facing dog. Make sure you've got space between the feet. Bend the knees if you need to, release the head and neck, and then walk the hands back into squat. Root down through the feet, come all the way up and the hands together. Okay, we've got two more rounds like that. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, into squat. Hands towards the floor. So take your time getting there, walking the hands out. If it's too much to come into dog, just come onto the knees and do cat-cow. And then we walk the hands back into squat. Root down through the feet, come up. So it's quite strong. And hands into prayer. Okay, let's do one more. Inhale, the arms reach up, strengthening those legs. Exhale, into squat. Listening though, listening intuitively what movement serves you best today. Hands towards the floor. We walk out into our downward facing dog just for a moment. Remember that bend of the knees if you wish to. And then walking the hands back 
into squat and then pressing through the feet coming all the way up hands to prayer and then stay standing for a moment you can bring the hands on towards the stomach towards the belly just let the heart rate calm a little so that flow that little very short sequence is great for strengthening the legs but just building some strength in the arms and movement in the body you can repeat this at any time as long as the body feels comfortable too. Releasing the hands by the side, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, standing work now. So again, we're gonna work strength in towards the legs. We do a pose called chair and a pose called tree, okay? So making sure you've got the feet as wide as you need, might be slightly wider the more pregnant you are. And then I'm going to sit the hips back as if I was sitting on a chair. I'll turn sideways in case that's easier. Actually, this might be better. And then sit the bum back and reach the arms out. So it's as if we were going to sit onto a chair, but it's a little bit too low and a little bit too far away. You can reach the arms higher up if you wish. You might feel it in the ankles. Let's just take one more breath there. And then bring the hands together, take the weight into one foot, so I'm taking it into my right foot, and then the other foot I'm gonna bring on towards the leg into tree. If that's too much for you, keep the toes on towards the floor. And every time you exhale, think of hugging in, hugging the muscles of the waist in, the baby bump in, so we begin to build this inner strength. Excellent. Foot to the floor, we come back into chair pose. And then we go to tree on the other side. So we take the weight into the standing leg and lift the other leg up. About three rounds of breath here. Use a wall if you need to. And just noticing again that element of listening that I talked about at the beginning of the class. You might feel like you've had too much information over the past few weeks, or not enough. Bring the foot towards the floor, coming into chair pose. As we move, you can listen to the body and knowing that what you need to know, you know, you will know. Let's take the weight again into tree on the other side. So all the time we're moving, you're working with this different shape and the body is listening, tuning into what needs to balance where, what needs to tense, what needs to soften. You can have the hands here or maybe up towards the sky. Give space in the sides of the body. Good, let's bring the hands, uh, the foot to the floor, chair pose again. This is our last one. So we take the weight into the standing leg, foot towards the inside of the calf or toes to the floor. If you've got small children with you, you can always ask them to do this as well. Small kids love tree pose. They'll often create new shapes. Excellent, and bring that foot to the floor. Good, a little roll of the shoulders up and back, and the other way. Okay, we're gonna do one more standing pose now. It's a little bit stronger, but I think we can do it. We've done quite a lot for our legs today. So, I'm gonna step one leg out, so this is my right leg, so my toes are facing to the top of the mat. My other leg, I've not stepped too far. You can go into a longer stance if you wish, however, if you've got anything going on with the pelvis and it's a little sore, sensitive, don't worry about this shape. You can come back to standing and do side stretches instead, okay? So I'm gonna bend to that front knee, but not too deep today. I'm going to lift up through the arms so my chest is turning slightly to the side of the mat. And then rather than holding this pose, I'm going to press and straighten the front leg and reach the arms up. So just get a little bit of movement into the body now. And then into this pose is called Warrior Two. Reaching up and then softening into the shape. Good. Two more like that. Inhale up. 
And if it doesn't feel right using the arms, you can absolutely just work the legs here. Last one, reaching it up. And then into warrior two. So we're gonna stay here for about two rounds of breath. Notice that sense of lift through the inner body. Pelvic floor has a little lift. Again, we wanna lift through the lower abdominals and then there's a sense of pressing down through the feet. Good, let's straighten that front leg, well done. Hands to the hips. And I'm just gonna spiral on that heel and then turn the other heel out. So we're just transitioning from one side to the other. Again, just remembering if it's not comfortable, come back to standing and do those side stretches, okay? So I'm gonna bend into that front knee. Now on this side, I can feel like I can go a little bit longer with the stance. So just see how you feel. A little bend into that front knee, draw in through the ribs, and then lift up through the arms. So this side feels a lot more challenging for me. So just notice again, listen to which side of the body has a little bit more space and then work accordingly with that. Let's do five rounds here. Inhale, reaching up, straightening the front leg and exhale into warrior two. Inhale, reaching up. And as you exhale, you can always look over that front hand. Good, a few more. And it might be if you need a bit of time in your day, a little bit of time just to let the body relax. So you can just step away from your desk if you're working as well from home and just do a few warrior poses. All right, this is our last one here, reaching up. And exhale down. We're gonna take two rounds of breath here. So it might be that you look over that front hand, soft arms and firmness in the legs. Good, hands to the hips. Let's lengthen that front leg, turn the toes forward, and then bring the feet together. Great, so we come back to standing. Okay, let's come towards the top of the mat. Again, feet wide-ish. We're gonna take the arms up and the hands down through prayer, again into that squat. Now you can modify it accordingly, Otherwise, if you want to follow me, I'm going to bring hands to the floor. I'm going to take one leg back, knee down, other leg back, knee down. And then repeat those cat cows from the beginning. Shins press, hands press, arch in the spine, and then looking forward. And again, like I said earlier, if you prefer to, you can lean back a little bit in the stretch. It feels quite nice just listening to what the body needs. And these can be teeny tiny movements. They don't have to be big movements here. Let's just do one more. And then taking yourself into a kneeling pose. I'm just gonna to turn to face you. Either hands to the knees or the thighs, to the belly, or you can bring them back into that mudra that we worked at the beginning, connecting the fingertips and having the space between the hands. Maybe the eyes close briefly. Take in a couple of breaths there. Excellent, releasing the hands. Okay, we can do a little bit more for the legs and then we'll see where we are there. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure your knees are supported if they need to be. I'm gonna take my right foot forward. You can start on any side, just make sure you do both. Hands towards the hips and I'm gonna tuck the back toes for this one. It's not the most comfortable of positions to have the toes tucked, but it is really good to get a stretch into the soles of the feet. And then I'm gonna not force, not press, but I'm gonna soften a little bit into this lunge. So again, anything going on with the pelvis, come back to kneeling and do those side stretches rather than this forward and back movement. Now from there, you might take your front foot a little wider. We're gonna reverse back. So you might need to use the sofa or a wall and we're gonna get into the hamstrings so in the back of that right leg. And then we're gonna move twice more with that. 
coming forward into lunge. You can always take the arms up if you wish. I'll do it on the next round. And then reversing back, exhaling normally into that space of the hamstrings. If you wish to, you can put the arms in, lifting them up. And then the arms come down towards the floor, reversing back. Good. Come back up into lunge briefly, and let's take that knee back and the other foot forward. And I'll often use the furniture, you know, to, to lean on. So feel free to use what you've got at home. Tuck the back toes under and hands towards the hips. And again, you want to think chest lifted. So you've got a little bit of space to borrow back for the breathing. Okay, just three times. But again, if you can repeat this every other day, so good. Especially if you are very active, like a lot of walking or maybe running or riding. Okay, in towards that hip. And then pressing back, hamstring stretch. And like I just did, you can take the foot wider to the side. It's a great one if you're working from home as well. Into this uh, psoas kind of front hip stretch. And then pressing back. We've got one more here if you wish to with the arms. The arms can lift up. Just make sure you move that foot a little to the left if you need to, to accommodate the movement and the bump and then into hamstring stretch. And we're not really holding it here today, but you could very easily hold this for four to five rounds of breath. Coming back to lunge briefly, and then bringing that knee back, coming into kneeling. Excellent. All right, we're gonna do a little mini, mini back bend, just to work across the space of the chest and the shoulders. So I'm going to stay kneeling. If this is too much, you can do this sat on a chair or you can also put a cushion between the heels and the bum, okay, which makes it a little easier. Now you can also have something behind you if you can't reach the floor. Okay, so I'm going to bring fingertips behind me. I'm going to get a sense of pressing the fingertips down or pressing the knees down and then think of lifting through the chest. So through the heart space there. Squeeze the shoulder blades together just a little bit, not a lot. Remember that, listening to the body today. And you can always keep the chin in or even look just up towards the ceiling. So don't drop the head back. We're going to take a couple more breaths here. Good. And then come back to centre. Excellent. Let's come to a seated pose. I'm just going to get a cushion. So you can sit on a cushion or a blanket. I'm just going to move this camera down a little bit. Okay. And let's take the legs into a cross leg pose, but really whatever feels right for you. And then we're going to do a very gentle twist. So I'm going to, if you are like third trimester and you're like, oh no, thanks. You just want to do a little turn. That's more than enough. If you can, you can cross the hand over, other hand behind you, or keep hand on the same knee. And very gentle twist. Really just thinking about moving up in towards the top of the spine. That feels a little tense. But again, no deep twists in pregnancy. In pregnancy yoga, tend not to do deep twists, big back bends, and inversions sometimes, it really depends on your practice. Let's come back to center, and let's move to the other side. So I'm gonna bring my fingertips behind me, hand on my knee, a little turn, for about three breaths here. One more there. And back to centre. So what I invite you to do now, we're at the 30 minutes. 
However, if you've got a few extra minutes, I invite you to move in towards a few minutes of relaxation. It's really nice if you can set the timer on your phone for maybe five minutes or more. If you feel comfortable lying on your back during your pregnancy, absolutely do that. And you can always elevate the legs or have them over a cushion. A lot of times in pregnancy, women like to lie on their side. So you could lie on your side, have a cushion under the head and maybe a cushion in between the knees. And that feels really, really nice. A blanket over the body. And just a few minutes of really listening to yourself, really listening and allowing yourself to rest can make a big difference in your day. So I invite you to do that. If you're closing the practice now, then feel free to bring the hands together again, as we did at the beginning. This is Anjali or Namaste Mudra. You might have seen it on the news recently. Take a couple of breaths there, just to acknowledge your listening, turning up to your practice, knowing that your body needed a little bit of time to move, a little bit of time to rest. Bring the hands towards your pregnancy, just to acknowledge that, acknowledge what you're doing and this precious cargo that you are nurturing and looking after. The eyes are closed, feel free to open them. Thank you for joining me. As I said, please take the time to lie down, to rest, and hopefully one day I can include that in this short session. My name is Emma Heald, and I really, really enjoy teaching you today. Please feel free to comment and to send any feedback to Fit Mums and Friends. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. And tomorrow, Wednesday, I'll be here again at two o'clock postnatal yoga. However, you're so welcome to join and to watch and then maybe see if it's appropriate for your body. It's probably even more gentle than this one. All right. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.